What's up YouTube, Big Almighty here. Today we got these Desert Elephant Jordan 3s. This is a beautiful shoe. However, I wish they would've put a Nike Air on the back tab instead of a Jumpman. So today I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Let's get started. A lot of my customs that I do on video require certain machines and resources that a lot of people don't have access to, but this process right here can be done at home. Right here, we got our Nike Air donor back tabs. If you guys remember last year, I did this crazy big restoration with Hoopfresh where we did a full reconstruction on the 1988 Black Cement 3s. In that video, we took apart a pair of Red Cement 3s so we could use the soles and mantles for those 88s. We also took off the back tabs and the tongues for future projects. Well, these are the back tabs from those shoes. We're finally gonna use them for a project. When it comes to these back tabs, you could go a couple different routes. You can either do what I did and grab a pair of Jordan 3s and rip out the authentic back tabs, but it could get a little pricey and you gotta destroy a pair of shoes when you do that. Or you could go a different route and get them custom made. There's a few different talented people on Instagram that do awesome work when it comes to custom tabs. You got Jason Colleges, he's been doing it for years. He has Jordan 4 back tabs and Jordan 3s and several others all in different colorways, so you have different options. There's also these other guys such as All Shoes Matter or B2 Heat Restorations. They don't stick to the rules with only doing Nike and Jump and back tabs. I've seen them do some really cool designs and logo work. Check them out on Instagram for all your custom back tab needs. Regardless, whatever option you go with, the sizing matters. On the bottom, it says nine to 11 and a half. These are a size 10, so they're good, but if they were size eight and a half or 12, they wouldn't fit. For before and after purposes, we're only gonna be focusing on the right shoe. Let's cut out our first stitch using the seam ripper. Careful not to poke into the leather or the elephant print. Got the Jumpman back tab off. It was pretty easy for the most part until we got to the end. The glue in the middle was on there really good. I had to use a heat gun to melt the glue a little bit and even then I had to use a lot of force, but I was still super careful because I didn't want to rip the back tab or rip anything on the shoe. We'll save these for a future project. Maybe, nobody wants to jump in back tab. Next thing we gotta do with our new Nike back tab, we gotta do some prep work. On the back, we're gonna be using some acetone and cotton balls to wipe off any glue. Prep work's done on the back tab. There's still more work to be done on the shoe, but we'll come back to that later. Right now we're gonna take care of the simulated stitching using some black thread and a needle. We're gonna hit it all around the back tab. The reason why we're gonna go this direction and not directly sew it onto the shoe using the patcher is because I don't wanna have exposed stitching on the inside of the sock liner. It just won't look that great. This is the next best direction. With good prep work and glue, it'll hold up just fine. First step, create a tiny little knot. Next, you're gonna to wanna to find the hole right past this line and get it going. Adding the simulated stitching is really easy. It's just a pattern. You gotta go back and forth, back and forth with one single thread and a needle. Good to go with the simulated stitching on this back tab. On the back, you can see all the thread. On the before, the stitching was directly on the shoe. So when I went and chopped it off, all the stitching got removed. Now we're onto our brown thread. We're gonna do the exact same thing we did on the back tabs. We're gonna add a simulated stitching all around this panel. There's two rows, so it's gonna take a little while. For this color, I went ahead and bought it from Joann's. Usually I go there to that store, take my sample thread, just compare it until I find the right one. I like to use the heavy duty Gutterman brand. Brown simulated stitching is good to go and blends in perfectly with this panel. It got a little tricky in the center area because it was a bit of a tighter space, but we made it happen. I did mention for this part that I used heavy duty Gutterman thread from Joann's. When I was at the store, I picked up two different shades of brown. The one I used was close enough, but this one right here was the perfect match to what I needed. The thing is, the thread was a little too thin. If I was to use this one, you would be able to tell the difference between the original and the new stitching, even if it's the same color. So this one was a better option. Now we're back to some prep work. We got our Dremel. On the shoe, on the leather specifically, all around this area, we gotta hit it with the Dremel to get it really rough. That way when you apply the glue to the tab and the shoe, it adheres properly. All the drumming is done, got it nice and rough. Now we gotta blow off all the debris using a compressor. Before we can apply some glue, we're gonna do some taping. That way we don't get any glue on the elephant print or the leather. It's really strong. We're gonna apply it onto the shoe and to the back tab. All you need is a thin, even coat. Nothing more than that, you don't wanna overdo it. We'll apply it, let it sit for a good 30 minutes, 
and then we'll come back and stick it together. Got the glue applied onto the back tab and the shoe. Right now the glue is tacky. We gotta let it cure. We're gonna have to wait about 30 minutes. The cool thing about this glue is you can come back in a week or two weeks and the glue will still be fine. All you gotta do is heat it up to get it tacky once again. So what I'm gonna do is get it lined up exactly where I want it on the shoe. Once I have an idea of where I like it, I'm gonna heat it up to get it in place. Got the back tab lined up. It's really important to make sure you covered up the holes on the side and the elephant print lines up nicely with the bottom piece of the back tab. Luckily it all worked out. Now it's time for lunch. So we're gonna let it dry for a little bit. We got our clamp. We're gonna apply a little bit of pressure so it can dry. We're back from lunch. We got the clamp off. Glue is fully dried. Now we're on to the elephant print. We're gonna tape off the tab so we can get the glue inside the elephant print. Once again, let it sit for a good 20 or 30 minutes. Let it cure and we'll bond it together. Once you get to this step, you don't want to rush it. You're almost there. Apply the glue nice and even on the inside of the elephant print. You don't want to get any of the glue on the elephant print or anywhere else on the shoe. I know it doesn't feel like it, but it's been 30 minutes. The glue is fully cured. We're going to use a little bit of heat to get the glue nice and tacky so we can stick it together. We're going to split it up into a few different parts. We're going to start out with the left side, heat it up to get it tacky. Then we're going to stick it together, let it dry for a few minutes, then move on to the middle and right side. All right, YouTube, that is gonna bring us to an end on this project. I showed you guys how to properly do a back tab swap on these Jordan 3s. All you gotta do is follow the right technique and use the right tools, and you can do this at home, I promise you guys. This Jordan 3 looks so good with the Nike back tab, especially on the updated shape on this Jordan 3. It just looks so much sleeker. It compares really well to the 1988 original Jordan 3. However, this updated shape on the Jordan 3 would not have been possible without Hoofresh. Jordan Brand did not give my boy any credit. Shame on you, JB. Hopping back to the back tabs, I'm always gonna go for the Nike Air, but this look doesn't look bad. One Nike Air tab and one Jumpman tab, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. If you guys follow these instructions, you guys should be able to do any back tab swap on any Jordan 3. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is Vic Almighty. I'll catch you guys next Monday. See you guys.